on today's episode of Locked on Wild, which Wild rookies could have a similar impact next season that Marco Rossi and Brock Faber have had this year? You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, Alex Micheletti joins us to see if we can figure out which wild rookies will have the uh, best opportunity to make a Rossi or Faber-type impact next season. We'll talk about the Calder chase. We'll talk about an insane back and forth on Twitter that has me very worried that the Wild are going to make a panic move in the offseason. And we'll take a look at the upcoming games on the schedule that probably aren't going to mean a ton, but you still got to play them. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, credentialed Wild media member, joined uh, as always by Alex Micheletti for a We Got a Point Micheletti Monday. <laughs> Just does not have the same ring to it, but no. Wild losing in overtime to the St. Louis Blues. Uh, had a chance to talk about the game on Saturday night and then on Sunday at noon, so we, we're not going to talk too much on it. I wanted to start, Alex, because we've seen some really good things from Marco Rossi and Brock Faber this season. 20 goals for Rossi. Brock Faber is should be leading the Calder Trophy race. Uh, 40 points at this point um, with 11 games to play. Just having tremendous seasons. And so I just wanted to try to figure out who amongst the uh, Wilds prospect group is going to potentially be able to provide this impact next year. Obviously, the one who is maybe furthest along is Murat Huznadinov, who's played in five games so far this season. So even if he plays every game the rest of the year, which we hope he does, uh, still would not be considered his rookie season. Because mm -hmm. I, I think you have to get to 20 games for it to be like your actual rookie campaign. And so... I think he probably is the leader at this point, but you know, it, it, it depends a lot on how this roster, um, how this roster looks after this season, like who's going to be, who's going to be up here. Maybe Jesper is up here uh, with Mark Andre Fleury retiring. There's a lot of variables that could impact who else gets the opportunity to. Yeah, I well, just looking at the decor when you don't hear anything about them and all, it's just all that they're struggling mightily. I I don't think anybody on the decor yeah. would, would be making an impact, and there's really no room for them unless they trade a Jake Middleton, you know. And uh, doesn't seem like John Merrill's going to be going anywhere. And now that you have uh, uh, Declan Chisholm, uh, you know, he basically fills the spot of where maybe a Damon Hunt would get a chance. Um, but it doesn't seem like Carson Carson Lambos is ready or or work is ready. So, you know, <laughs> scratch anybody from the back end, uh, you know, making an impact. Um, and then, you know, like you said, you have Husnanov, they're probably solidifying a spot at least, um, you know, because I don't think they're gonna, you know, send him down to Iowa. So no. um and then the Really intriguing thing would be would Riley Height get a nine game you know spot to to see if he can can stay with the team or you know go back to to junior. He's not um, eligible to to play in the AHL yet, based on you know you know by the time the season starts, he'll only be nineteen. So you can't um, when you play in the um, in the Canadian Hockey League, you can't uh, um, you know you have to be older than nineteen to to play in the AHL. So 
it's you know, one of those two options uh, for him. And uh, you know, the way the way he's dominating, you know, uh, junior hockey, you have to at least give him a really good look. Um, yeah. And look, hey, uh, you know, Zach Benson's been with the uh, Sabers um, the entire season, and you know, he's you know has been in you know he wasn't a one or two overall pick. Um, you know, he made it and you know stayed. You know, he was that impressive in his nine game stretch and you know in this day and age too uh you know teams are desperately looking for entry level contracts um and so when you when a guy scores like that um you know you, you have to give him give him a chance to um, see what he can do at the NHL level and, and i feel like i feel like this organization because of where the priorities lie right now which the priority is making the playoffs and so your thought process on young players becomes, well, we got to really protect them so that they don't make mistakes because we have to win these games. When in reality, it should be, we have the opportunity to really be impressed by how many times do you see organizations throw a rookie into the mix and be pleasantly surprised to the point that then they just become, like you said, Zach Benson where you throw a guy in and you just let him kind of figure it out as he goes and understand the fact that there will be mistakes made, but you just, that's just part of life. Like part of life is learning from, from error and not like dwelling on it and not um, making your rookies be accountable for mistakes that players higher up in the lineup are making regularly. <laughs> and, are not getting called out for it. Like, wh what do you think is going to happen? Because Matt Boldy clearly had an error at the end of the Blues game yes. by not stopping in front of Jordan Bennington to force him to ice that puck that led to the game-winning goal. What do you think is going to happen there? Nothing. He's, because, he, because he's one of your top guys that you absolutely like have to rely on to win games, there's not going to be anything that would happen. But if if a player like if Murat who's Nadinov made that same mistake, oh wait, he hardly played at the end of that game as it was. Right. Yeah, they were double shifting guys in in his place. Yeah, which is unfortunate. And this blues team, again, every time they play them, they give opportunities for the wild to here's the two points, and they yeah. just uh I I just don't understand it. And uh you know, it's just, you know, Jordan Cairo just blowing by Matt Zuccarello. It's, uh, you know, just, it was you know, super, super unfortunate. Um, and man, uh, I, the two points was there for the wild to yeah, take again. It was right there. And just yeah. add that to the list of games in which they have not been able to do that, whether it be blowing a lead in regulation and losing the game, uh, the Buffalo Sabres game at the X is probably the best example of that. You had the lead with under a minute to play and let two Sabres players walk right up to the front of the net and just jam the puck home until it gets past Philip Gustafson. And then you lose an OT like there, there just have been. And it's uh it's only fitting that, uh, you know, the, the wild lose against Nick Letty in his a thousandth game with the blues and Brandon yeah. sod getting the game winning goal who always terrorized the wild with, with the Blackhawks. And so both of them are now blues, which is crazy to think. Cause that's uh, Chicago's probably most heated rival over the years. We remember the Jonathan Taves, David Backus stays going at it together for, for a decade. And so it's just only fitting that they're now blues and uh, um, you know, both had pretty good games against, against the wild. And then, uh, you know, super unfortunate to, you know, have Brock Faber be in the penalty box for uh, that goal against it. Just it, you know, for the the college hockey fans um, that uh, follow both the Gophers and the Wild, it just was like fitting to not have Brock Faber be on the ice, just like it was in the national championship game. It's like yeah. uh, just critical moments where you would would have loved to to have uh, to have Faber out there in the refs. Uh, in that scrum, of course, only take him and neighbors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is just super, super frustrating when there was so many other, you know, things going on in that scrum. There was a lot more that was, uh, was going on at that point in the game, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, 
it's just another another opportunity that uh, goes by the wayside. So just to kind of wrap things up here for this segment. So your top nine is basically set. If we include Murat, who's Nadine off in that mix? If you do nothing in the offseason, which as we're going to talk about next, it doesn't feel like that is how this is going to play out. If you do nothing, your top nine is pretty much set. You have an opportunity in the fourth line to have a couple of spots. Um, you've got, you know, Mason Shaw is a restricted free agent. Adam Beckman is a restricted free agent. You've got Marco Rossi and Vinny Letary locked in. So you got potentially one spot that is up for grabs from somebody not currently on the roster. Cause I feel like with what we've seen from Vinny Letary, even though he hasn't scored a point in like 30 games now, um, I feel like they'll bring him back to be a fourth line guy would not be surprised if Mason Shaw gets re-signed. So it's very likely that your entire forward group is locked in. Right. If you do nothing, which again feels like is not how this is going to play out as we'll talk about, because <laughs> there was an insane back and forth on Twitter this weekend that about made me deactivate my account <laughs> burn all of my electronics and just go walk out into the woods. Uh, we'll talk about what exactly that pertails and why I will say in point blank language, it would be foolish to trade Marco Rossi. We'll talk about that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Even though we just got a full helping of snow, the Minnesota Twins get their season started this week. And so you will have plenty of opportunities to get some last minute tickets and great deals on those tickets for all the target field action you can handle by going to Game Time. Game Time helps you find the best last minute deals on your tickets. Plus, they show you what you will see in every seat at the venue you're headed to, and they don't blindside you with any of those hidden fees. What you see, you will pay. So those are all the most appealing reasons why you should check out Game Time today. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We are your team every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn the volume down with all of the shouting? Make sure to switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, I teased what is just, frankly, a kind of a scary thought process that it appears is at least being considered in Minnesota Wild Circles. Uh, there was a Twitter exchange, Alex, over the weekend, in which Michael Russo noted that after Marco Rossi had one point in 19 games in his first season in the NHL. His first year can't call it his rookie year because it didn't he didn't amass enough games to be counted as a rookie. Um, to go to 20 goals this season. He said just unreal work by Rossi to be able to put himself in position to succeed as much as he has. Wicked Nick. Stop encouraging the minions, Michael. If he's on our squad next year, we'll be in the same position, fighting to be mediocre. We need a real center to move forward. Small guys, number 46 and number 23, need to go as well. Marco Rossi is number 23, so I'm I'm confused by the uh, the double mentioning. 
Russo quote tweeted it and said, the way to get better, Nick, is not by trading 22-year-old talents because they, the Wilds, have locked themselves into an aging, undersized roster. Wicked Nick responds, I'm not even saying that's the route or the plan. I'm just saying that if we haven't pushed him down the lineup with an actual NHL top center at some point, we're not going to be getting any better. And the response to that is uh, somebody else notes, if he's on our squad next year in quotes. And Russo responds, the unfortunate thing is I'm not sure he's wrong. I think the Wild are considering it which would be quite unreal considering they've tried for 24 years to draft point-producing centers and swung and missed other than Eric Sinek, Koivu, and now Rossi. Ladies and gentlemen, the panic move is coming. <laughs> the We need to quickly course correct to make the playoffs next season because I'm starting to get myself into the mindset of, if the Wild miss the playoffs two consecutive years, I think Bill Guerin's gone. Which would yeah. be just insane. It would be just an insane fall from grace in the span of like 18 months. Yeah, this it's been a whirlwind of a year. I mean, everything that's happened, the the double investigations into the front office, <laughs> uh, not having a, a cap guy for half half the season, which is just mind boggling that they haven't, uh, um, you know, replaced, uh, Chris O'Hearn and just, uh, <laughs> I mean, having to rely on the, uh, you know, the NHL to help with, uh, with contracts or just, uh, um, the salary cap. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's been insane. Uh, I, you know, just, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, and then dealing with, uh, you know, hiring a, uh, a interim coach or not interim now, but Heinz without interviewing anybody else, which you rarely see, which yeah. is just, just crazy. Um, and then I don't know. It just, uh, the only thing that I can think of for Garen is that, uh, you know, you hear this all the time with Marco Rossi is that, uh, he's too small to, um, to, to win in the, win in the playoffs with, or get, get the team to the playoffs. And so, and, but Bill Garen also did this to himself too, by locking in yep. all these no move deals. It yep. just, uh, you know, you bay the, the only assets that you can really do a panic move in or, or him or Jake Middleton, really, if you think about it, uh, that could get something decent, uh, back, you know, because no one wants John Merrill, even if he's been, nobody wants better. Freddie Goudreau no one wants Freddie and Freddie's not going to, you know, um, ask to get out of his no move. Same thing with Marcus Johansson. You think yeah. he's going to, uh, even if he gets traded, he's not going to play somewhere that would, you know, actually hold him accountable because he doesn't get that here. As, as we know, it's just, uh, it's just insane. Um, and, uh, you know, Ryan Hartman's not going anywhere. So yeah, there's just, uh, you're really, you know, he did it to himself as far as, uh, any flexibility, but, uh, you know, it's, it's setting up for a panic move and that always happens around the draft when, uh, all the GMs are, are together. Which is going to be in Vegas this year, so that's going to oh be. Oh my god! <laughs> I so like this, and this is just completely like this is just completely polar opposite backwards of how a franchise should be operating. Because yeah. what you should be doing, what you should be doing is, okay, when is our tr when is our true window to contend? Is it 2026, 2027? Okay, then we need to be throwing everything and. It's it's possible that the Wilds still have some sort of a um, viewpoint like that because you can see it coming any... with with the forward prospects at least they yeah. look really in, really enticing but uh, you know they're all they also could be doomed now here too if they're blocked by you know top six roles because you know a lot of these guys or they're high end, you know, mm -hmm. do you want them playing on the fourth line? That's, that's the problem. No. I mean, 
uh, you know, clearly you hope that, uh, you know, Ogren could, could fill a Marcus Johansson spot, you know, and get him out of the, out of the top six, uh, wouldn't, Riley height. Maybe I would, you know, if, if height makes the team, uh, I'd rather have him be in the, you know, second line spot than, than Marcus Johansson, who, um, cardio kid, uh, just one shot a game. Uh, you know, that you know, no one needs that in the, in the no. top six or, or power played rather, rather see a young kid get, get that chance. Yeah. It's, it really is just like, it, it gives me a headache even thinking about it because other teams, literally every other team that is in the, um, Look at the Blues. The- Jake Neighbors is getting all the opportunity now to to flourish, yeah. and he's gonna he's gonna be another guy that just terrorizes the the Wild for for the next decade. There, these teams, uh, they're kind of uh, the Blues are doing a perfect job of you know they are saying that they're still in the fight, but they're also blending in younger talent and yeah. giving them opportunities to, to flourish. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's the, <laughs> the wild are kind of just, they seem to be stuck in their ways and no, you know, stuck in the not, middle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's not the way to, to operate. And, you know, now they're kind of, you know, they're kind of really handcuffing themselves in the, in a great, you know, top 10 of the NHL draft too. It's, uh, uh, you know, they're very similar to the Vikings. The Vikings could have lost a couple more games and not have to, uh, you know, to trade up, uh, and sell the farm to, to get, you know, in the top three and in the wild now are kind of just, just stuck too. And, uh, at least in the NHL, there's a lottery system, so they (laughs) could, could get lucky, but I just, I just watched, you know, this, this past weekend, I mean, they are uh, some of the college guys that are going to be in the top ten are just just phenomenal. They're pretty the good. Boom from from Denver. It's just just amazing. The Michigan State defenseman too the, from from Belarus. It's just uh, yeah, it's uh, obviously Celebrini and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just unfortunate if they get stuck right at, you know right outside the the top ten because I think this yeah. is just a loaded uh, first round class. Third. 13 or 14 was just <laughs> just not of course yep. um yeah it it is like you see all these other top teams colorado dallas and i i know the wild don't have those guys so they like they haven't been able to pro, uh prioritize at the level of having like a mckinnon um a rantanen and a shoe skin yeah but uh, even dallas even- i mean dallas their drafting has been absolute home runs. Yeah. And uh Rupe just Hint look, and Jason Robertson were both second round picks. They've uh, have developed within and just let 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 them play. And yeah, Miro Heishkin and he is so much fun to watch. And and they got him and Robertson and Ottinger, I think, in that same same draft. It's just it's just insane. Why Johnston and uh, this Logan Stankoven is, you know, they are just nailing every single pick that that, that they have. Uh, yeah, phenomenal scouting staff, and uh, you know, blending blended in them in with with the veterans that that they have. And uh, Dallas is going to be a force for for a long time to come. Um, they're playing Stankoven at um, on the third line because <laughs> of the depth that they have on the first and second lines, <laughs> and insane. he is completely thriving because he's on a line with Wyatt Johnston. And I think Jamie Ben's on that line too. Yeah. So it's, it's a vet with the the two kids and he's kind of showing them, showing them the ropes. And it's kind of actually, you know, everybody thought Jamie Ben was done. And this year it's just been like a revival for him. And, you know, Tyler Sagan, uh, getting, getting to play with, uh, Mason Marchment and, uh, and Matt Duchesne, who, that might be the steal of, uh, you know, of the contracts, uh, you know, in the last couple of years to, to only be paying Duchesne 3 million. That was just yeah. a highway robbery. That's unreal. Uh, yeah. He's going to definitely cash in this summer um, after the season that he's had in Dallas. Um, I was going to try to look and see who the um, Minnesota wild drafted in uh in the year that Jason Robertson was drafted, 
that was the um that was the Arizona year, wasn't it? Yeah, and just uh you know, it's just so frustrating too when he yeah, um this Charlie Strammel pick over um over Game Perot and they just can't, you know, they made up for it obviously with with Riley Height in, in theory, you know, hopefully he gets uh, gets a chance early, but uh you know, Gabe Pro is, uh, you know, right up there as one of the leading scorers in NCAA, and uh, Strammel is is uh, nowhere to be seen again uh, at Wisconsin, and is probably going to transfer out of there. And <laughs> yeah, it's not 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 good for for uh, um, you know first round pick, and they uh, uh, you know they get they got caught up in not taking the best player available. You know, it's just, uh, you do that and, and then, you know, <laughs> and get, make it work, work from there. You, it's just, it's so frustrating to pass on a, a guy like Gabe Pearl. Um, the 2017 draft was the one in which the wild traded their first round pick for Martin Hansel. Yeah. Just devastating. Ooh. I mean, who just did Chuck Fletcher thought that was the answer to shut down Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. I have no idea what he was thinking. That's in a yeah. long list of moves. Uh, Nick Letty for, for Cam Barker. Uh, you know, Letty not even getting a, not even one game with the wild. And now he's a thousand games later, Stanley cup winner. Yeah. Just, uh, just mind boggling. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta hype it up. I, uh, <laughs> that, that is, this has put me in a dark place. Um, we're <laughs> yes. we're going to talk about the games coming up for the Minnesota Wild to finish things off. Yeah. As we continue today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Sleeper. And as we move through the final month of the NHL season, there is still time, whether your team is in the playoffs right now or fighting tooth and nail to try to get there, there's still time for you to win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports and especially Daily Fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy hockey contests. To win a 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly pick the outcome of eight different player stat categories. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper, so start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See sleepers, terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of Locked on Wild. One final segment here for today. And uh, once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol joined by Alex Micheletti today. And Alex, unfortunately for the Wilds, Vegas has a game tonight. They play tomorrow night. They play Thursday night and then they play the wild on Saturday. So this, these well, a, a classic day game too, right? For against. Yeah. Vegas. 130. Yeah, just, I think yeah, it is just 32, 30 somewhere weird start. In there. Yeah. Um, and so these, these dwindling playoff chances are in the single digits and could very likely be done by the time the wild and the golden Knights play on Saturday. Um, the wild only play San Jose on Thursday and you know I I jokingly say you can't even put that one in the win column because the last time these two teams played it took Kirill Kaprizov uh single-handedly just yeah, going going uh superstar mode going insane uh, but San Jose is San Jose is fighting tooth and nail for the number 1 overall pick or at least the uh, just... best odds to get it they just played uh, Chicago twice. Chicago beat them. Uh, so <laughs> San Jose is now now the favorites to get Celebrini. So they're in the driver's seat. The the tank the tank wars between those two franchises. It's been, I mean, over the weekend, you know, <laughs> San Jose went up big against Chicago, and there someone must have told David Quinn call 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 hey. off the horses, and then of course the game winner was Seth Jones. Who's had one of the worst seasons he's had in a long time. 
gets gets the overtime winner. You can't you can't make it up for you know Chicago's been historic one of the historically bad teams on the road this season. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, you know San Jose is starting goalies that no one's ever heard of. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's uh, the tank wars are fully on. They basically like they basically just took the um, like the devil's goalie room essentially. <laughs> like, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> flip flop and and they were horrible and you know it's just like a swap of uh, of terrible goalies uh, it's 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 insane yeah it, it really is they, they got it they, that room got lindy rough fired yeah it's <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy Ugh. 16 48 uh 16 46 and 8 so for the lay person they're 16 and 54 and so that is, you know, you know, here's what I'd like. Here's what I'd like for Thursday's game. It's a game that you should be able to handle. Yeah. So why not give an opportunity for some of the lines that have not had opportunities recently? Most notably, whatever line we're at, who's Nadine at? Yeah. How about wild. you pair him and Adam Beckman together and, you know, put you could put Marcus Felino as the as the other wing if you're going to have him be the third line give that combo a try like, Marcus just, has looked good with that Adam, Adam Beckman you know, when those two played again yeah. with each other on Nashville I mean that, that, that they showed a little bit of chemistry at least give uh, it a shot give, give it a, a shot, shot just get those let those guys get 15 17 minutes instead of this same old like well we have to give line number 1 28 minutes line number 2 25 minutes like, like that king like the kings game when it was out of hand adam beckman was barely even playing it's yeah, like he had, what are we doing he had what 4 minutes of ice time through two <laughs> periods just like you know, it, the game was, they weren't coming back. So yeah. why, why not give, give those opportunities? Even if you're in the playoff chance chase, there was, there was no way that they were getting back into that uh, Kings game. Yeah. It's like the, this is, and this is all the, this is the win at all cost stuff that I talk about a lot. And it just, it gets tiresome. Like it gets, it just screams of desperation. I mean, like if it gets to eight points tonight, that, that is, I mean, you're, you, even though you're not, uh, mathically, your math, you know, eliminated, mathematically uh, eliminated, mathematically eliminated. Yeah. I mean, eight you're points. close. Yeah. It's just, you know, the, the, this is where it's killer where, you know, like Vegas is playing St. Louis or Vegas is playing the Kings, you know, just these teams right, right there. Or, you know, Vegas is playing a Nashville, but Nashville just uh, doesn't seem like they're ever going <laughs> to lose again. Let me, I just want to look. So 7.4% right now. And it's not doing it now, but like a lot of times money puck will, if you hover over the, the odds, Maybe it's just because my my computer is tired. Um, if you hover over the odds, it'll tell you like if you lose in regulation, your odds go to this. But like seven point four percent right now, it's going to drop even further if Vegas wins tonight. It's going to drop even further if Vegas wins on Tuesday, and if Vegas ends up winning on Thursday, like it, it may not matter. It probably won't anyway. What you do in that game on Thursday, like. It's just we're just getting to we're getting to the final like the final time that you peek over the diving board before you take the big jump off the uh, the high dive. Like we're <laughs> we're getting to that point where you kind of are just waiting. You know what's coming. You're just waiting for the official like, OK, it's here. It's done. And honestly, I would just rather that happen sooner than later at this point so that we can just just start prioritizing next season finally right <laughs> yeah you have to at some point you, you have to call off all all the dogs and uh and let uh let the kids play as we've been trying trying to you know <laughs> hammer home and you know marco rossi being on the top line uh you know 
it's it's been great to see him uh, to you know produce with uh, Kaprizov. Um, it's uh, you know he deserves deserves that chance, um, and mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm I'm happy for for Marco getting uh, getting that uh, you know opportunity. Uh, and uh yeah it worked it worked against the blues and so yeah. you know at least uh let, let you know let's hope that uh that continues i guess for for a little bit uh here to end the season yeah we'll uh and of, of course we'll once we once we have the official like mathematically eliminated then we can finally turn our attention to like what what happens now like we've we've been in where we've been in how did we get here mode for a while. <laughs> Finally, at some point, we'll get to where what do we do now? Right. Like, so we'll uh, we'll keep you up to date on um, everything, including how the Vegas Golden Knights are doing over the uh, the next couple of days. So make sure to subscribe to Locked On Wild here, so you don't miss out on any new episodes. Make sure to give us a like here for today's episode and uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any new episodes when they are released. We've got new episodes for you every Monday through Friday, plus pre- and post-game content for you as well. You can find all of that at Locked on Wild, which is part of the Locked on Podcast Network.